Forrest Gregg was the head coach of the Bengals when this draft took place. He went out and worked him out. Forrest Gregg winds up a defensive end. Forrest says, now this is what I want you to do, and this is the hand work, and the pro set, hut, hut. And Forrest takes one step, and Anthony shot on the ground. And Forrest said, uh, I think we're going to draft this kid as number one. When Anthony Munoz was drafted, the newspaper said, this kid's only played 16 college football games. He can't stay healthy. What the hell are we doing drafting this kid? Anthony Munoz quickly put to rest all concerns about his durability. In his 13 seasons, he missed only three games due to injury. When he first showed up in Cincinnati, he looked like an extra uh, in a Ben-Hur movie. Hair down to here, curly, real dark, mustache. Kind of heard the East L.A. look. I don't know, you show those stinking badges. One of those guys, you know. And I wish I'd been there the first time that Paul Brown had seen him. Munoz was a nine-time All-Pro and was named to the 1980s All-Decade team. Once he starts inside, you can start trying to finish the block. The offensive line coach at the Bengals, Jim McNally, let Anthony, I think, come up with his own stance. I don't think you need a coach. <laughs> huh? He had kind of a wide stance with the foot way back, but he was athlete enough at his size that he could recover for anybody coming down to the inside. He was perfect, absolutely perfect. And the way he set up, he gave defensive ends no place to go. Man, he just, he devastated defensive ends in this league. I mean, he put them on the ground, he put them off the line of scrimmage, he protected the court, everything. He's the first big guy that I've ever come across that ran distances to stay in condition at 6'5", 275, or 280. He'd run 10, 12 miles two or three times a week. Big guys didn't do that. Munoz's athleticism proved a vital and versatile asset to Sam Weish's up-tempo, no-huddle offense. The worst thing about playing Anthony Munoz on any given Sunday is you're going to be out there against him for 40 or 50 plays. Well, with this new offense, now you're going to be out there against Anthony Munoz for 80 plays. He's going to beat your ass 80 times, not 40 times. They'd line him up a tight end and, you know, 78 eligible. And he'd fake the down block and Boomer Assassin would find him in the end zone a lot. Loud pass off in the corner of the end zone. There's a touchdown, Anthony Munoz. It was fun, especially the first one. Sam Weiss's rookie year uh, with the rookie quarterback, Boomer Assassin. I wasn't crazy about the situation. The Bengals with a chance to tie it here with seven seconds left to go. It was first and goal. We had to score to take it in overtime, and I was basically the primary receiver, so it was either catch the football or walk home from Cleveland. Boomer throws into the end zone to Anthony Munoz, touchdown! In 1998, Munoz became the first Bengals player to be enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was so consistently proficient for his entire career. The day he retired, I didn't see any difference in the way he played offensive tackle which is extraordinary. I mean, he was still just stuffing people at the line of scrimmage or driving them down. The number one draft choice that the Cincinnati Bengals had ever made was Anthony Munoz. The best choice to this point in their history, ever. Anthony Munoz, 